is the Lord's in the fullness thereof, the world and all those who dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord, or who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to an idol nor sworn swore deceitfully. He shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is Jacob, the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face, Selah. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, lift up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Stephen's tree. Praise the Lord, everybody. Listen, we're going to stand to our feet. We're going to give God praise. We're going to worship up in here. Because that's how Wayne did it, right? That's who he was, a praise and worshiper. And so this is not the time to be quiet, right? We know it's a somber occasion. However, it is an occasion because we know where he is. Hallelujah. That's where we're all going to get to, right? So let's just thank God. Hallelujah. Let's just give some praise and worship as we get, yes, yes, let's stir it up in here. God is Praising the life and celebrating the life of Wayne and Jane Stevens. And we're going to tell a few stories, so get ready. I'm sure you have a few of your own. But thank God. So we're going to read Sing the Earth. These are cousins, sisters, nieces. How about that?
can sit down if you want to. <laughs> Unless you want to stand. No. 
acknowledgments by Sister Latasha Martis, followed by selection by Sister Beth Ann Davis. Good afternoon. To the family of Wayne Eugene Stevens, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? It is with profound sadness that we acknowledge the passing of our friend, Wayne Stevens. Although he lived away from Muncie for many years, his impact has been significant and lasting. Wayne, as we affectionately called him, was such a gifted person. He was an extraordinary musician, singer, choir director, songwriter, and minister of the gospel. It was my privilege to record one of his compositions early in my own fledgling music ministry. His gift made room for him to travel across the country and around the world helping ministries make international impact for the kingdom of God. He will be greatly missed. Special condolences to his sisters, children, and grandchildren. As his family and friends, the Lord has blessed you with special and precious memories of special times spent with Wayne that are stored deep in your heart. Hold these memories close and never let go for they will comfort you in the years to come. Wayne Stevens has gone from labor to reward in the presence of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and is in, in, in eternal peace. If there is anything that we at Destiny Christian Center can do for your family, do not hesitate to call on us. We are here to serve you. May the Lord bless each and every one of you. May his face shine upon you and give you peace. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment, but has passed from death into life. John 5, 24. Humbly submitted, Bishop Dr. Keith and Lady Reva O'Neill. Living Word Christian Center Resolution. To the family of Wayne E. Stevens from Living Word Christian Center on behalf of Dr. William S. Winston, Senior Pastor. Our heartfelt prayers are sent forth for you and your family while we mourn the transition of our departed loved one. We understand fully that the word of God says, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Isaiah 41.10 says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, though I walk, ye, though I help thee, ye, I will uphold thee with the right hand of righteousness. Know that within you resides the enabling power of the Holy Spirit, who Jesus promised would always abide, comfort, and strengthen you. You have total victory in life when it seems that all hope is gone, for your strength is made perfect in weakness. Lean on and trust in the Lord. The Apostle Peter admonishes us in 1 Peter 5 and 7, casting all your cares upon him, for he careth for you. It is the love of God, our Father, that brings you peace, comforts your mind, and strengthens you daily. Even though this time may be a time of sorrow, you still have much to be thankful for. God has given the oil of joy for mourning and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. Know this day that your brothers and sisters at Living Word Christian Center love you and are praying for you. You can praise God for his concern because you know that he will never leave you or forsake you. Have confidence in God and trust the comforting ministry of the Holy Spirit to guide you through this time. We believe that the peace of God which passes all understanding will keep your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. Submitted this 23rd day of October 2021. Words of comfort to the family and friends of Wayne Stevens. Dear family and friends, it is with our heartfelt sympathy that the Union Missionary Baptist Church extends this condolence. It is, however, our prayer that homegoing celebration of Wayne Stevens reflects the joy and love that he brought to so many as a wonderful man of God. His faithful earthly presence is now rewarded by his eternal position in the presence of the Lord. The legacy that he leaves is one of love, compassion, meekness, humility, service, and faith. Now may the God of all comfort bless you in the moments and days ahead. So then once again and forevermore, as saints of the Most High God, you will be joined with the one you so dearly love and the one who so dearly loves him.
Know that according to Revelations 14, 13, blessed are those who die in the Lord, for they will rest from all toils and trials, and their good deeds do follow them. May you have comfort, peace, and strength in the unfailing word of God. In his love, fellowship, and prayer, Pastor Robert D. Scaife. To the family of Brother Wayne Eugene Stevens, with our deepest sympathy, the Antioch Missionary Baptist Church extends to the family and friends our heartfelt condolences in the home going of your beloved. Brother Stevens was known not only locally, but nationally for his musical talent. He didn't mind sharing his gift with anyone and was always willing to assist a soloist and or choir. So many of us sung under his leadership, whether it was with the Gospel Airs, Golden Tones, or the Northeastern District Youth Choir. He affected all our musical skills in one way or another. Although this is a difficult time, we know the same God who has sustained, who has sustained you in the past will be with you during your time of reflection once again. While we do not always understand all of God's ways, we do know that one day we will see clearly. But for now, we see through a glass darkly. Antioch's church family wants to assure you that you will be in our thoughts and prayers as you go through this trying time. And the same God who has helped you with past trials will be ever present during this one as well. As believers, we know that it is because of the resurrection that we will one day see our loved ones again. And it is for this reason we have hope and blessed assurance. May God continue to bless and keep you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Numbers 626. Humbly submitted yours in Christ, Pastor Edward Long. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither, sh neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Revelations 21.4. To the family of Wayne Stevens, we offer our heartfelt condolence in the loss of your loved one. We know that words cannot express your loss, but we do know that God's grace is sufficient for you. Precious memories, how they linger, how they ever flood our souls. Keep the memories dear to you of your loved one in your heart. We pray for peace and comfort for your family during this time. Humbly God's servant, Dr. Kevin Woodgett, pastor, the Church of, Living, Church of the Living God. The family of Mr. Wayne Eugene Stevens. On behalf of Ms. Tamley Butler Robinson and the Engaging Solutions family, we extend our heartfelt sympathy in the loss of, our, of your beloved brother and friend. A great man of faith has shared his God-given gifts around the world through singing, composing music, playing the organ and piano, and preaching the gospel. Psalm 46 and 1, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Our prayer is that you will find comfort in God's unchanging presence, in his steadfast and abiding love. Jesus, our Lord and Savior, has promised never to leave or forsake you, because God is able to be and do exceedingly more than we can ask. We can pray for his strength to sustain you. Mere words cannot capture the depth of your pain, but be assured that our Lord and Savior is well prepared and able to comfort you through this difficult journey. Jesus, our Lord and Savior, is not slack on his promises. He will never leave or forsake you. Because God is able to be and do exceedingly more than we can ask, we pray for his strength to sustain you. May you find peace in God's presence as you journey through this difficult time. We pray for the Lord to shower you with the fullest measure of his peace and love during this time. Please know the Engaging Solutions family loves you and is ready to assist you at any time. May the Lord's love continue to keep and bless you. Humbly submitted, Tamley Butler Robinson, Chief Executive Officer. In addition, there are several condolences. One from Reed Church of Charlotte, North Carolina, Dr. Terrence A. Bridges. Terrestrial Temple of Muncie, Indiana, Pastor John and Lady Renee Wagner. Trinity United Methodist Church of Muncie, Indiana, Pastor Henry S. Carter. Prayer House of Deliverance, Muncie, Indiana. Pastor John and First Lady Lavetta Smith. Deliverance Temple of Muncie, Indiana. Pastor Andre Mitchell. 
Greater New Life Family Worship Center, Indianapolis, Indiana, Pastor Kenneth Bond. Greater Mount Calvary, Church of God in Christ, Muncie, Indiana, Pastor Earl A. Venable. The family would also like to thank everyone for their acts of kindness, prayers, and love. Amen. Yes, my brother. I'm going to do my two minutes now <laughs> with my little talk about Wayne, musician extraordinaire. He gave me a true appreciation for not just music that I liked or I thought I liked, but for music that was different. His voice was so amazing and so versatile. I went to see him in Bye Bye Birdie, and I couldn't believe that that was the same Wayne that sang on Sunday morning. Because then he would sing Rise Up and Walk, and the church would just be laid out. And then he would play Beethoven. And, you know, we would say, what is that he playing? You know, or on Wednesday when the storms were raging, if the people who know Dr. Fibes, you know, when he was getting ready to kill somebody, he would get on that pipe organ and start to play in that real crazy music. Well, he would do that on Wednesdays also. <laughs> he taught me to care about how I sang how I sounded, how I blended. You know, you're not supposed to just hear me. You're supposed to hear us as one, as a choir. And when unity was formed, that's what was in his mind. He said we were gonna be unified. We were gonna be one voice, even though it's male and female. And he didn't let us stand alto, soprano, tenor. No, it was alto, soprano, tenor, alto, soprano, tenor, alto, soprano. So that way you didn't have a, you know, you had to learn your part. You know, you had to learn it because the microphone was right there. Yeah, so, but I appreciate that. I appreciate all the times we had to sing and stand and sing the same song over and over and over and over and over again until it was right. He dare not go on Sunday morning. We looked like we didn't know, we, we hadn't practiced. I was just grateful for him, for being who he was. And this song that I'm about to sing just wouldn't get out of my spirit. It just, he's been in it for months now. And, and then when I tried to sing, my mama has a favorite song that people love to hear. But I, I told mama, I got to sing this one because I just can't let it go. So... I think this is about him, my life, my love, and my all. Your kiss 
Thank you, Sister Beth Ann Davis, for <laughs> for sharing that such appropriate song for the life of Elder Wayne Eugene Stevens. This time we're going to have tributes from the Kenneth Copeland Ministries, from Reverend Kenneth and Lynette Hagen of Raymond Ministries, Keith Moore Faith Life Church, and Reggie Scarborough Family Worship Center in Lakeland, Florida. That's going to be followed by selection and remarks by Pastor Candy LaFleur, Maranatha Church of Chicago, Illinois, accompanied by Pastor Stephen LaFleur. Wayne Stevens, oh my, oh, all of the experiences and the things that uh, I remember uh, Wayne was playing, we were, we were on the island of Ebi, and um, they hadn't had any rain for, for years, and, and that whole island's water that were under supervision of, of the U.S. Navy and there, with no rain, their huge cisterns were dry, and and they they were. It was costing fifty cents a gallon for water just to bathe, and so we just went in there just praying and believing God. And it started raining, and it rained, and it rained, and it rained, and it rained. And one night, I'm giving the invitation, and Wayne is supposed to be playing, and I thought, why isn't he playing? He had a he had he had a you know a. a uh, electronic keyboard back there, and it had a little stand with a little little <laughs> little uh, um, cover over the top of it, and it was raining and raining. And I was giving this invitation. And I'm thinking, why isn't Wayne playing? And all of a sudden, I heard that thing. And here he came. And I found out later, Wayne was down underneath there drying that thing out with a hair dryer, and he finally got it dried out in time to play for the invitation. That's Wayne Stevens. Glory to God. I'm telling you, he worked with Brother Hagen. He worked with Keith Moore. And you know, Keith's uh, uh, writ has written a lot of music. And Wayne Stevens helped arrange and was, was, was part of Keith Moore's music ministry, Ray Jean Wilson's ministry. And I, I just, I can just see Wayne. I mean, that guy starts singing and I think, that guy, that man has piano strings for vocal cords. <laughs> I mean, oh, he, I mean, he's, he's just such a magnificent man. Three daughters. Amen. Kendra, Wynette, Julianne. One of the most anointed singers that David Ellis said. And you know how long David's been with me. And he's so close to, to, to uh, Wayne. And, and, and I'm, I'm reading it right now, the statement that, that David Ellis made. He said, he's one of the most anointed singers he has ever worked with. Mm -hmm. That says a lot. Wayne Stevens has gone to heaven. And heaven is his kind of place. You can talk you talk about singing. Oh, listen, can you imagine? Mm -hmm. Wayne Stevens goes through the gate. And there's Andre Crouch. <laughs> Glory to God. As Andre and, and oh. Big John Hall. Big John <laughs> Hall and the great, oh, 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 isn't, I'll tell you, it makes me want to go. Praise God. You can't go yet. No, I can't. I, but I just, there's just so many things I could talk about. Wayne and just you know, for a long time, such a sweet man and just, just so kind-hearted, just a wonderful guy. And he's in heaven right now. Praise God. You talk about singing. Don't you know there's some singing going oh, on? Dear. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh. We applaud yes. the life of Wayne Stevens. God bless the family. Bless you forever. In Jesus' name. 
God loves you all, and we love you, and all of us together. And Jesus, Jesus is Lord. Lord. You know, as I sat here in the studio to record this video, you know, I, ha I have a heavy heart. This is the second of my Rama singers and band that have gone to be with the Lord in the last three weeks. Yes. Wayne was a tremendous individual, a tremendous musician and singer. Oh, yes. When, I w when he traveled with the Raymond Singers and Band and he would get on that organ and I would get, I would get to preach in an evangelistic style like I did back then. I'm a pastor now, but then I was the evangelist. Yes. And he, he would start on that organ and man, I could tune it up, I guarantee you. <laughs> and Wayne helped me to do that. And then of course he traveled with us on the road with me, with dad. And uh, he was even the manager of the singers and band for a while. And uh, you know, I'm sure with Bruce already, Bruce yes. Black, the trumpet player, him and Wayne, I imagine they already got together up there with, uh, with the Heaven Orchestra and they're probably changing some things <laughs> right now. They probably are. So, I just want to take a moment yeah. to say how, how much I, I, I loved Wayne and what he, what he brought to the table when it came to our services and, and, and our ministry. And he'll be missed, but hey, it's not goodbye, it's just see you later, Wayne. You know, when I think of Wayne, in fact, uh, in our crusades, and I teach in the morning on prayer, and many, many times at the uh, end of my service, uh, I have the, the group to sing, I will move up higher. And every time that we sing it, I think of Wayne because Wayne wrote that song, a beautiful song. He wrote so many uh, beautiful songs. And, you know, that is something that will carry on. And uh, we will miss him. You know, we say that Wayne has departed, but God says he has arrived. And so we just pay tribute today for him and, and knowing that he is there in heaven receiving his heavenly reward. Hello, everyone. I'm Keith Moore. I uh, apologize for not being there with you today, but I appreciate uh, from the family being able to make these comments. We're celebrating Brother Wayne's life and, and ministry and, and his home going today. Phyllis and I had the privilege of, of knowing Brother Wayne, and I had the privilege of uh, working with him for years, years. We were both at uh, Rama in the 80s and 90s, and uh, we worked together in prayer school and in healing school. And man, we, we spent a lot of hours playing and singing. And uh, Brother Wayne's always more accomplished musician than, than myself. Man, I always called him the chord master. Oh man, he he would add those different notes on top of the chords that just help you go to the next level, you know. And, and so, uh, in uh, prayer school and healing school, day in day out, we had opportunities to do things that weren't scripted and look for new songs and. Um, uh, Brother Wayne, uh, as you know, had grace in that area and the real anointing of uh, minstrel. He could, uh, you know, not everybody that plays well uh, is anointed, but um, when you're looking for something in the spirit, and you're looking to find a sound, a tone, you have to be able to sense it in your spirit and then express it through your fingers or through your voice. And as you well know, Brother Wayne is used of the Lord to do that. On our projects, he helped us, I think, with every one of our projects. And oh, the help he was. In the studio, I mean, sometimes we're there all, you know, half the day and all the night. And 
You know, you find out about people when you spend all day and all night with them. And, and Brother Wayne's just so helpful and so committed to helping us get out what the Lord had put on us, put in our hearts to, to do in those projects. I know he helped a lot of other people on their projects because of his ability. And I was thinking uh, today that, you know, people are playing that music right now. I mean, all the projects he was on with us, singing, playing, arranging, I mean, working with background vocals, all those kind of things. Um, even though he's in heaven and, and the Bible said they rest from their labors, but their works do follow them. Uh, it's a wonderful thing that you're already resting from your works, and yet the works you did on the earth are still producing producing, and they will. They will keep going. I'm so glad, so thankful to uh, have been a part of, uh, to know Brother Wayne, to be a part of his life, him to be a part of us and our ministry, and he has such a special place in, in my heart. I count him a friend. And something I learned some years ago, I never refer to my friends and my family members in the past tense. Sometimes people will try to correct themselves and say, well, uh, you know, Wayne is, oh, I mean, he, he used to be. No, he still is. Yeah. He still is. To depart and be with Christ is far better than being here. And something, when my dad went home to be with the Lord, I, I was a little annoyed because I thought, well, there were some things I wanted to do with him and, you know, I'm thinking, well, now I won't get to do them. And later the Lord spoke to my heart. He said, son, uh, you, will, you will yet get to do things with your dad. Some things you won't care about anymore. Other things you still will want to do. And you will yet get to do with him because your dad's not just in your past. He's in your future. Well, Wayne's in our future. And it'll be so wonderful to when we get to see him again, and of course, at that point, we'll have none of the restrictions, none of the limitations, none of the confusion and darkness that we've been dealing with down here. I know without a doubt that if Brother Wayne could have a request right now, he would say, if you don't know the Lord, receive him immediately because you want to see Wayne again. You want to be reunited with believers that are already on that side. And the older you get, <clears throat> you get to a point where you got more people over there than you do here. You know, that's the way it works as you get older and older. So everybody under the sound of our voice, I'm telling you, this is the most important thing to Wayne right now is that you get to where you could see him again. And that's going to be where the Lord is. Let me lead you in a prayer, everybody. Affirm or reaffirm your faith. Set out loud, Father God, I do believe in you. And I receive Jesus right now as my Lord and Savior. I receive salvation. Thank you for putting my name in the Lamb's book of life and making a place for me in heaven, in glory, with Wayne and the rest of the family of God. I receive it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. If you really did that, you will see him again. And it'll be better, better than ever. We love you. Thank God for you. I thank God for Brother Wayne and all he has put into us and our friendship. It's not over. The best is yet to come. He's not just in our past. He and all the great host of heaven are in our future. We love you. Celebrate life. Celebrate victory. Celebrate salvation today. Hi, I'm Reggie Scarborough, and I'm here to celebrate with you today the wonderful life of Wayne Stevens. 
He was a dear friend, and I loved him dearly. And for the last seven years, he spent here with me in Lakeland, Florida at Family Worship Center. What a blessing he was. And I'll have to say to you, I've never seen more talent in one person, I don't think, in my life. So I just want to say thank you, Home Church, for all you sowed into his life. His life was a blessing all around the world. When I first got to know him, he was working with Brother Hagen. I think 15 years he was there. He's been here seven. But then between those times, he was around the world with other ministers, and we're so grateful for that. What a blessing he's been to the body of Christ. Family, we love you, we're praying for you, and we're trusting everything is great. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. My name is Candy LaFleur, Pastor Candy LaFleur. My husband and I have been good friends with Brother Wayne for so many years. We went to Rama together in Tulsa, Oklahoma. We traveled on the road together. We did all the recordings with Brother Keith Moore that you just saw on the video screen together. Stayed in the studio many late nights. We traveled for many years together with Kenneth Copeland as well. And then Wayne also helped me with many of uh, my live recordings. He would orchestrate and do all of the administration parts. He has been a dear friend of us, to us, and we will, just can't wait to see him again. And I was thinking about so many funny stories. Anybody that really knows Wayne, how many people really know Wayne? Yeah, and so many funny stories, but I was thinking about how we would rehearse. I was, when the sister was talking about him in rehearsal, when we would rehearse preparing to go on stage for a conference, and he would set the key, and he would, he would say, oh, this is, I'm not going to go any higher than this. And we would get out on stage, and I, I, he would blame it on the Holy Ghost, but sometimes I think he was just being angry. Uh, <laughs> and he would take us up. He would take us up again. He would take us up so far. I said, brother, we are singing with the angels right now. What is going on? And, but he had such a way in the anointing of God when it came to music, where he would shift the atmosphere and bring heaven into the very room. And so I'm so thankful that I had the opportunity to minister, to know him, and to love him. Amen. I will move up higher. I will move up higher. I think this is his testimony, right? Set my sights above the clouds where God does dwell and his glory does prevail. I will move up higher. This is the song Wayne wrote. I will move.
what it will be like when I walk by your side. I can only imagine when my eyes will see when your face is before me. I can only
Thank you, Pastor Kendrick. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. wife and I were doing a leadership workshop and we were talking about true leadership and one of the things that Dr. Miles Monroe always said that true leadership is when you serve your gift to the world. That's Elder Wayne Jean Steve Stevens. He served his gift to the world and the world is blessed by it. And our lives are blessed by it. And as long as our lives are blessed by it, it will continue to live on. We don't have to be last name Stevens to have it continue on. But as Beth Ann said, just that touch. Now I can't sing, I couldn't sing at all. Couldn't carry a tune if you cut it in two buckets. But we were having some kind of appreciation for, I don't know what it was, a union. And he wanted to use different people to lead. And he said, Michael, I want you to lead this part. Scariest time in my life. <laughs> and I got up and I sang the part and I don't know why people stayed in the sanctuary. But he didn't back off of it. He wouldn't let me go. He wouldn't let me loose. He said, you're going to sing this part. That's Wayne G. Stevens. That's him. Thank you so much. God bless you. This time we're going to have a tribute by Mrs. Virginia Level. Who raised all of us, I think, at Union Missionary Baptist Church. <laughs> followed by a pictorial tribute. Beth, is she going to come up? You want to stand down there? Or you want to do that? Okay. Praise God, from whom all blessings flow. Truly, God is good. He's good all the time. He's good in the morning. He's good in the afternoon. And he's good late at night. And I had a little, I don't usually have trouble sleeping at all. But last night I had trouble sleeping. I had several things on my mind. Usually I pray, and then when I get through praying, I, I'll say, okay, I'll close the door now. I won't think about nothing else after I finish my prayer. I give my sleep to you, Lord. But last night, I was tossing and turning, and I don't do that either, because when, when I get out of bed, you could look at my bed and it don't even look like nobody been sleeping in it. Because I don't toss and turn. After I have my time with the Lord, I shut the door. But last night, I had a worry on my mind. I still substitute teach at 88 years old. Oh. 
And, and people say, why do you do that? I just love the kids. And the kids need direction in this day and time. When I started teaching, it's, it's, so, it's so different. The children don't have respect. They, they don't have any get up and go. They don't have the things the kids had when I had Wayne in school. Okay? And yesterday, I had a sixth grade class, and the kids were terrible. Usually, I can kind of calm them down and, you know, and everything. But this class, it was, it was awful. And every time I try to go to sleep, their pictures would come in my mind. And I said, Lord, I got to pray for these kids because they need something or they need someone to pray for them. So tonight when you go to bed and you say your prayers, think of those kids and tell the Lord, get in their mind and in their hearts so they can do what they need to do when they grow up to be men and women. All right, I had to get that off my mind. <laughs> but I had Wayne in school. I had Wayne Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. <laughs> you know, every place I went, Wayne went with me. <laughs> People thought it was my son because we would go to the convention, we'd go to church, different churches. Because any, any place that was playing music, choirs were singing, Wayne wanted to be there. And he was right there by my side. And he said, where is your son? I said, my son? Yeah. I said, oh, he's not my son, my real son. But he is my son because I am, I'm help, you know, bringing him up, okay. And so he, <laughs> um, he would go to, I'm from Chicago. And I grew up with Thompson Community Singers, Milton Brunson, and all those. Yeah, I grew up with them. Milton was a good friend of mine. And so we go once a month to the Thompson Community Singers musical. Wayne was right there. And my, my husband was there, too. But one time, I don't know what, what happened that my husband couldn't go, because we were always together. And so I said, he says, I don't know if I want you to go to Chicago by yourself this time, you know. And so I said, well, I, I know how to get to Chicago. I know how to get to uh, uh, um, Milton's church. And Wayne was there, and he says, they called my husband Papa Lubop. That's what <laughs> Wayne Teresa and <laughs> Paula called him, Papa Lubop. And he said, Papa Lubop, I can take care of her. So, so my, uh, my husband, he was tall, he looked down way. He was about 13 or 14, I think, at that time. And he said, what can you do? He said, I can do everything. I can take care of her, and won't nobody bother her either. And so <laughs> Irvin said, well, okay, I'm going to put you, my wife, in your hands, and you be sure you take good care of her, Okay. And so uh, off we went, off we went to Chicago, just Wayne and I in the car, and we went to the musical. And he had several people that he really admired. He always would watch whoever was playing. He would be right there. He was watch them, you know, watch them. And so one time we were in Annapolis, and Rodney Bryant, have you heard of Rodney Bryant? We sing some of his songs. Okay. But anyway, Rodney Bryant is one, kind of like Wayne, he could play the drums, he could play the organ, he could play the piano, he could play, he could blow the horn. And Wayne said, I want to be just like him. I want to do all that. 
I said, you can. You can do all of that because God has put it in you. And I can see right now God has a bright future for you. Now, he not only went with me to Chicago and all the places that we would go to Indianapolis. We traveled to Indianapolis. And uh, Wind Singers, they had a, a group called Wind Singers Meet. And we would go to the, those singers. We went to Kentucky, Louisville, and all around that I said, I'm going. He said, me too, me too. And so we just traveled around all the different places. And Wayne would always want to sit in the front so he can watch whoever was playing play. And he'd watch them. One day I heard a knock at the door, and I went to the door and Wayne. I said, what boy are you doing down here? He said, I just want to talk. And so we had these little talks from now and then, you know. And he said, the Lord called me to preach. And he said, I'm confused. He said, now the Lord called me to play. He said, I play. And that's, he was up some age then. And he said, he's given me all this talent to play. Why would he call me to preach? And I said, the Lord has a reason. All you have to do is follow. Whatever he tells you to do, you do. Because he will direct your path. And he'll put you in the right place at the right time. And so he says, well, I said, just pray on it, Wayne. Because great things are ahead for you. Great things. And so he was satisfied with that. We had these little talks every now and then. Now, Wayne played for the choirs at Union, and I directed. But we, had, we, we were synchronized. He would know exactly what I wanted to do, and I knew just what he wanted to do when I direct. I mean, it was just, you know, it was just like we had a, a wire or something, you know, and everybody said, oh, yeah, you know, together. But we just had that connection, you know, ever since he was a little tot and he started tinkling on the keys, you know, because I love music and wherever there's going to be a music workshop or anything, count me, I'm in. And so we just had that connection. And so it just hurt my heart when he said he was leaving. And I said, oh, Wayne, what are we going to do? He said, Mr. Love, I got to go. He said, I got to go. And so he left. And I was so sad. We had a little, little break in between and a little bit that I could play, you know, and find, find the key and find the chord. And then we, the Lord sent us someone else. But he, he just had that, someone said he was kind. He was. And he, he was concerned. Maybe that's a good word. He was concerned about everything and anything that came his way. And he did everything to try to help. Because there were a lot of times, you know, how you get things in the mail and you have to put them together. I couldn't put it together. Wayne, I got something I have to put together. He said, I'll be right down. He gave, put it all together for me. And, you know, and he was just that kind. Anything I called and asked him to do, he would do. And I loved him. Those three children were my children. Wayne, Teresa, and Paula. He helped raise them. We did lots of things together as, with their mother and father and family and get-togethers and we'd sit around the table and play games and everything. We just had a lot of fun. And I really missed him after he grew up and he had brighter things ahead. 
And so, we, as, uh, as has been said before, we'll see him again. Can't wait to see him on the other side. Along with some of the singers that we know, we worked with James, James Cleveland, and Newton Bronson, some of those guys that we work with in the workshop. I know he's up there, and he, he's probably playing for them. You know, James Cleveland used to say, I can't play the piano like everybody else and know all those notes. He said, but I know what I know. <laughs> and he, he'd get up there and he, he would play his way. And uh, he says, okay, y'all play all that other stuff. He said, but I know what I know. So he'd play his little play. And so anyway, I know, what, I know that's where Wayne is now. I know he's up there playing the organ and piano and singing and going on, greeting this one and Charles Nixon. All those play, all those musicians and everything. I know, and he, he wanted to go his way. He said, sometimes we have a song, and, and I said, no, he's the homies level. Don't go that way. Go this way. He said, we take it this, let's add a little more to it, okay? So then he'd add a little more to it. And then I was trying to think back there real hard. My memory's not like it used to be, but... There was a song that he wrote. It was a commercial. It was no Batman. That, that's what it was. Remember Batman's? Uh, that used to come on the radio and it had that. Doo, 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 you know, yeah. And I told him, I said, Wayne. I said, I like that song that comes on with Batman. And he wrote some words for it. <laughs> He wrote words for it, and we sang it, too. We sang it. <laughs> but he, that, was way, that was Wayne. I loved Wayne, I tell you. I had um, Wayne and um, my nephew, Leon. They, would, they was always with me. It was my two sons. They, everybody thought they were my sons because they were always there. And, um, but just like she said, I don't know, I probably had half of y'all in school. I don't know. Yeah. How many have I had in school and church and different things? Okay, look at the hands. See all of them? Yeah. Yeah, okay, so. I just love young people. And I'm going to teach as long as I can teach. As long as I have young people that really need me, I'm going to be there. Everybody always want me to, you can't tell me you wouldn't have retired. I said, the Lord will tell me when to tire, and he take the legs away and the mind away. Then I know it's time to stop. <laughs> but until then, I'll be teaching somewhere, if not here, up in glory. <laughs> This time we're going to have the pictorial tribute and then the Stevens family will come back.
anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands to worship as we bless your holy name. You deserve the glory and the Lord, we lift your hands in worship 
As we bless your holy name, you deserve, you deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands to worship as we bless your holy name. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands to worship as we bless your holy for you.
this time we're going to have open remarks. If there's anyone who would like to share, um, and then we're going to proceed on to the eulogy by Dr. Kevin Woodgett. We'd be mindful of the family and the time. So, is there anyone? Dr. Motley. And Virginia told you about how Wayne and I would be in the back seat with that of her and Uncle Irvin on many trips. I just want to make a my eye and I won't cry but if you tug on my heart it takes a village to raise a child many of you have known each other from Union Sister Ida Joe Nettles and Miss Carrie Long I'm trying to say this fast enough to be done with two minutes, but I got to speak for Lonnie Motley and Olivia Motley and myself and Lonnie and Glow and Shalada and Suzetta's here. She can speak for herself and Clarence. I was joking with one of the cousins, Dave Hampton, about back in the day when we were gathered there on Wolf Street on the 4th of July and all the different families had to bring a dish, but QLs had to barbecue. And everybody always kept saying, come on, QL, you need, you need to open up a business. You need to open up a business, and we know the rest of that's history. It's often been said, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. That's the way we grew up. It was, it was so beautiful. It's almost like we were brothers and sisters as opposed to just good neighbors. But there's two occasions I want to tell you about where Wayne, along with a lot of you, blessed me. One was my wedding to that bride I've had for 38 years. Wayne played and sung Ribbon in the Sky, because that was one of my favorite songs. And I know how long I'd waited for a bride. So <laughs> Wayne said he would play and sing it. And the maids, bride maids, marched down the aisle to it. The other was, as in Virginia told you, we had went to different conventions. And thanks to a lot of you that's even out here, you let me serve as your officer in the Northeastern District and the state of Indiana and even on the national level. But on this one particular occasion, we were in Philadelphia. Reverend W.N. Daniel of the Antioch Missionary Baptist Church of Chicago. Many of you are familiar with that because that's where Gerald Dew is now the pastor. Small world. He was presenting to the youth convention in a small ballroom there. And I had known from my teenage years that Wayne was blessed. But that day, Reverend Daniel got to preaching. And when he got to the end, 
he asked Wayne to play, is your all on the altar? I went with Wayne shopping there in Philadelphia. Wayne brought a, the latest a pair of stacked heels. <laughs> he started playing as y'all on the altar, altar. Wayne doesn't even remember finishing it. Tore those stacked heels up. Reverend Daniel, you know. That was the first time I had my own Pentecost. And I wasn't the only one. Reverend, how many of you were in Philadelphia? That I, I can't remember who all was there. Went with us that year. Reverend Daniel walked the back of some chairs, like those chairs you see right there. I watched him walk the back of those, with people in them and with people not in them. He told Wayne, "You don't ever have to be without a job. You call me." All of us had a praise report this morning. Yeah. All of you to see me and all of you to hear me. Because you woke up this morning. Please care. Thank you. Amen. We're just going to hold just a second. Um, we have family members that need to leave, so Pastor Widget is going to come now. There will be opportunities at the repast for, to share uh, reflections, but we want to honor the, the family, so Pastor Widget is now going to come with the eulogy. Come on, let's give God some praise. I mean, seriously, give God some praise. I don't mean patty caking. I know we've been sitting still for a little while, but I do know that God deserves the praise. God deserves the glory because what Wayne has poured into us, we owe God glory for everything that he poured into us. It doesn't really matter that we haven't seen him in a while. But it doesn't really matter because why? We are all a part of the body of Christ. And we were connected through the body of Christ. When one is sad, one, all of us are sad. But when we praise, oh God, everybody ought to praise God. Keep me high in the monitors if you would, please. Come on, come on, don't stop. Keep me a little higher in the monitor, please. Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 I just feel if you just start praising God right now, that the atmosphere will change. Not only the atmosphere will change, but your heart will be lifted up higher than what it is right now. So I'm just going to ask everybody in here, if you got a voice that you can open up your mouth, I want you to open up your mouth and give God your best praise. If you can't praise Him, if you can't praise him for where you are, praise him for where he brought you. If you can't praise him for where he brought you, praise him for where he's taking you. If you can't praise him for where he's taking you, praise him for what he's done in your life. Woke you up this morning. He woke us all up this morning. He started us on our way. He started us on our way. And we owe God praise. The Lord has just, just been heavy on me to that, that in these services, we don't take the time, as much time praising God. Because in this last day, we're going to need the praise, oh God. Uh, we're going to have to remember the praises of God. Uh, because everything will look so dark. Uh, everything will look so dim. But if we praise God, uh, the Bible says he inhabits the praises of his people. Uh, 
and I don't know about you this morning uh, but I need the praise of God uh, to rain forth in my voice uh, to rain forth in my mind uh, this oh God how oh God uh, oh God uh, this one thing have I desire of the Lord uh, and that will I seek after uh, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord uh, oh God forever 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 we just bless the Lord you you can be seen if you can we just bless the Lord but I'm not gonna be long cuz I want to make sure that the girls get this information and it's very critical because God is moving even in this time period even in the time that we think that the pandemic has ravished our families and have taken, or it seems like it's taken loved ones out of here. And we know that everybody's not dying of COVID, but, but we know that there is, it seems to be, uh, uh, quite a few members of our family that are transitioning. But I want to tell you tonight, you don't have to, don't let your heart be worried. If you believe in God, Jesus said, also believe in me in my father's house are many mansions if it were not so I would not have told you but I come today because my friend he's made his peace calling and election sure everything that is it is but I thank God for what he poured into my life I thank God for the things that we were able to accomplish here in this great city of Muncie, Indiana. I'm going to say this again. I'm proud to be a Munsonian. I'm proud to be from, Mun I'm not going to tell people I'm from Indianapolis or so. No, I'm from Muncie, Indiana. That's where I'm from. I'm from Muncie. And there's some good things in Muncie. God, get amen. There's some good things in Muncie. There's some great things in Muncie. But, but as I was just thinking about my brother and we would just meet on times, uh, we, we, we started what was called the Citywide Choir. And it was the first time that, and, and, and please don't take me wrong, all of my apostolic brothers and sisters from PAW and the apostolic world, please don't take it wrong. But it was the first time that a Baptist... I'll say it. I, I ain't scared of nobody. But the Baptists and the Pentecostals actually came together. We, because there was a dividing line. <laughs> well, some of y'all don't know. Y'all young folk don't know about that. But there was a <laughs> There was a dividing line. And we didn't seem to cross it. Now, I got, read, I got a lot of rebuke for it, but I didn't care. Because one thing I found out about a person that is connected to worship and connected to praise, and that is there is a like manner that they have that you have. And there, there, there's some things that, that, that unite us more than separate us. There are some things that make us one more than it makes us two. It, and, and so we found that camaraderie. We found that camaraderie and, and we wrote songs together. It was so funny because we would just go up to Union and I'd sit by the organ and he would say, okay, now what you got? He said, well, what you got? Now, come on, Kevin. Now, you know, we didn't come up here just, you know. And he would challenge me that way. And I'm so thankful for that. And we would write songs together. And then we would teach them to the community choir. But I want to leave this with you, with this family. And i got to let you know that, that there, are, there are four things that make, make Wayne Wayne. And make us the praisers and the believers that we are. And that's what keeps me in this time period. I've, I've, there have been four of my friends that left with here in the last month that I've had to do eulogies for most of them and, and it's just like Lord I, I don't really like doing eulogies all the time I, that's not who I didn't think I signed up for it I'm just telling the truth and all y'all preachers y'all know we don't feel like we really signed up for that but we do it but here's the first thing one of the first things that that always will support you in the time that you're in is prayer 
prayer will get you through where, where nothing else will get you through because prayer is a covenant communication with God. And I talk fast, so I'm going to do this fast. So it's okay. Prayer is covenant communication with God. It is the umbilical cord that keeps us running because how can you say you have a relationship with somebody you don't talk to? I don't want nobody that, that, that my wife don't, my wife cannot stand it and I can't stand it either when we ain't talking because why? That means there's some communication that is broke down and if we're going to go forward how many want to go forward if we're going to go forward in the time that we're in right even now in this day if we're going to go forward we got to go forward with prayer because prayer keeps us in the place that we recognize who God is not who we are who God because the even the prayer that he gave his disciples it says thy will be done Thy, not my will, thy will be done on earth as in, he as is in heaven. And so one of the things that I want to share with you that God gave me to give to my girls, let me tell you, and even to the family, I'm not, I'm not, I call them my girls, y'all, y'all understand it. They my girls, so I wanted to tell you that prayer is key in this time period. Prayer is key. The Bible says, Jesus said in Luke 18, in the 18th chapter, he said, men ought to always pray and not faint. And then he goes through a soliloquy of, of a story about a woman who had an issue that the judge would not hear or would not, would not, would not, he didn't care because he didn't fear God or man. Do we have that here in, the, in, this, in this world today? They don't fear God nor man. They're not scared of nobody. But the Bible says that he connects, he connects faith with our prayer because if we're believers, we should be praying. And I'm not talking about just the down, now lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. But we should travail in prayer. Because why? Prayer is, doesn't move God. But prayer does get God a way into our lives to let us see what we need to do. And so he, he, he told me to tell you that prayer is essential and Jesus wraps it around faith because at the end of the of the story he says now when I when the son of man this is the most powerful statement I believe Jesus made he said when the son of man returns will he find faith remember he started with prayer but he ends up saying will he find faith in the earth. So I must believe in prayer. I must have a belief that God still answers prayer. I must believe that God will hear me when I pray. And the second thing is this. One of the things that this is the one thing that God is after more than anything else. He's after worship. Because why? Worship is a key. It's a pillar to your, to your, to our salvation. The Bible says in John, the fourth chapter, he tells us very clearly. He tells us very clearly. He says, he says that my father seeketh worshipers. How many worshipers in the house today? Because worship is not about the, the slow song or about the fast song. Worship is not about how we act in the sanctuary. It's how we act outside the sanctuary. Because worship is the yielding of your will to the deity that you say is over you. Meaning that you cannot worship without a yes. Meaning you can't worship without saying, Lord what is thy will for me? That's worship right there. And you can clap those hands right there. Because because we're growing in worship amen we're growing we're growing in worship and worship is 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 critical because what we do in here must reflect in our actions outside of here what we do in here if we're going to do if worship is only takes place in here then we're in trouble because why God is not seeking us to be here he's seeking us to a world that is dying he wants us to be able the world to be able to see us and know that we stand for a true and a living God and we will not bow we will not bow to the dictates of the world. We will not bow to what the world is trying to offer us. And I get so irritated, and, and this is just off, my, off the cuff, but this, uh, I get so irritated when the world always tries to tell the church what to do. The devil is a lie. You don't tell me what to do. Because God can rain manna where there is no food. God can cause rain where there never was rain. God can spring up a well in the middle of a desert. And if God can do that, then God can handle Everything that's in this life, uh, everything that's in life. So that's the second one. The third one, the third one is, is one that, that we, we often talk about and we talk about it a lot and that is love. 
Love, 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 love is critical. In this time period, you have a great, y'all have a great family. Man, I, I, I feel connected anyway. I don't care. I feel so connected to this family. And, and you have love. And then this is the thing. Love one to another. Love does not hold back. It, it gives out. He, his life gave out. He gave out. He poured out. And sometimes, maybe not even, and, and just from my experience as a worship leader and a music minister, sometimes not getting poured back into in the proper manner. In the proper manner, and so I'm, I'm thankful uh, that 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 he had an understanding of 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 his love for 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 God, and 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 we have to love even the more now because why we're separated for those who don't wear masks to those who do wear masks. We separated from those who take the shot or don't take the shot. And I got to tell you something: ain't none of it biblical anyway. So all we doing is just wrestling. We just wrestling with what the world is telling us instead of leaning and learning on God and leaning on God we have to lean on God because it's not even about all of that because at the end of the day if you get the shot and you live till Jesus come what's it to you well if you don't live oh God come on if you don't live guess what we still got to meet Jesus we still got to come before the Lord uh, so we can't make it a big issue and so this is why love must be must be given it must must always when you cease to give you cease to love just say that with me real quick when i cease to give oh i didn't think everybody said that now let me just try that one more time if i cease to give i cease to love so at this time period, you know this family needs your giving. They need your love. And it's not always monetary. Sometimes it's just a conversation. It's just somebody just willing to pick up the phone and say, hey, you were on my mind. And I just want to let you know that I love you. And I'm here for you. And I will be here for you. So we got prayer. We got, we got worship. And guess what? We got love. But the final thing is something that, that I love to do. And we started off with this, this message this way. And the Bible says that I will bless the Lord at all times. Uh, his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Uh, and the final thing that I want to tell you that will support you is praise. I don't care. I don't care how down I have been. Uh, and trust me, I have gotten, I've been down. Uh, I have been out. I don't care how far out you are. Uh, he has given us the garment of praise uh, for the spirit of heaviness. Uh, and once you put on that garment uh, and God wants you to put on the guard oh god because he got a history oh god praise just make sure that you if you can't praise him for where you're going you can praise him on the history of god in your life you can praise him because why god gave you somebody that didn't throw you away god gave you somebody that Put in front of you uh, the tools that, it, that you need to worship, uh, the tools that you need to praise. Uh, and so I want to just leave you with that uh, because why praise uh, is to commend the, 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 the value uh, of the worth of an individual. Uh, and the eulogy, whether you know it or not, is about praise. Uh, it's about commending the words, uh, good swelling words. Uh, and we've heard all of the words uh, and nobody got up here and told him down nobody have got up here and got in anything but everybody talked about how good he was and what he meant to them uh, even in Ephesians the first chapter it is a eulogy uh, it's called the eulogy of praise uh, and because it talks about God calling us before the foundation of the world uh, it talks about that we have been accepted in the beloved uh, and anybody in here that's been accepted in the beloved uh, I want you to raise your hands right there uh, I want you to just give God praise right there huh? you may not have known Wayne like somebody else uh, but you know his God uh, and if you know his God uh, then you ought to be praising him right now huh? because I praise God uh, I will bless the Lord at all times uh, his praise shall continually be in my mouth uh, look at your neighbor say neighbor uh, what's your mouth saying uh, because if your mouth ain't saying it uh, then it may not be on the inside uh, but what's on the inside uh, will come out. Uh, I bless the Lord. Uh, I bless the Lord. Uh, I praise the Lord uh, for what he meant to me. Uh, I praise the Lord uh, for what we did together. Uh, but I praise God uh, more for what he did for me. Uh, 
what God did for me. He saved me. He's kept me. He's brought me up. He's brought me out. He's brought me in. He's always been good to me. Look at your neighbor very quickly. Say, neighbor, if you can't praise him just for who he is, then praise him because he grades on a curve. Oh, oh God. I'm so glad that my God grades on a curve because I promise you, I've not always been what I want to be. I've not always been what I thought I should be or what the word called. But I thanks be to God that he grades on a curve. You say, Pastor, I don't find that in scripture. Yes, you do. Every time you hear the word grace, you ought to jump up and down. Every time you hear the word mercy, you ought to be running to the altar. Every time you hear God about God's mercy and about God's grace, I thank God. I thank God and for the righteous that don't never make mistakes. The Bible says a just man, a righteous man falls seven times, but he gets back up. What is it that makes him get back up? It's the mercy, it's the buffer zone between our destruction. Mercy, it's the mercy of God. So right now, my soul shall make a boast in the Lord. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I glorify you. Lord, I magnify you. Lord, I give you praise. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. I dare you to break out with a praise. I dare you to go ahead. If you want to shout, go ahead and take your shout. If you want to run the aisles, go ahead and run the aisles. You can do it. You can do it. I encourage myself in the Lord. Be humble. Yes. Say yes. Say yes. Hallelujah. How many want to give God just more praise? Huh? Come on up, y'all. Come on up. Come on, put those hands. Don't stop it. Huh? Yes. Yes. We should go out of here huh? praising God. Huh? We should go out of here huh? thanking God huh? for the goodness. Huh? Oh, God. Huh? Hallelujah. Come on, Dorsel. Yes. Come on, put your hands together. Come on. We know this one. We know where this one's going. This ain't one of them funerals where it's kind of shaky. But we're grateful for the praise that's in our heart. Come on, put your hands together. Yes. Thank you. 
the glory for the things, the many things. Hallelujah. They wanted me to do the committal. I'm sorry, I got a little carried away. <laughs> Let's do the committal. It says, for as much as it has pleased Almighty God to take out of this world the soul of our dearly beloved brother, we therefore commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust, looking for the blessed hope when the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. How many get happy right there? The Lord shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Oh, that should give us joy right now. The dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort ye one another with these words. Father, we thank you for this family. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you, Lord God, for giving us a view into your glory. We're so grateful, oh God. So we ask in the name of Jesus that you cover them and give them peace and give them strength. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Woodgett, for the powerful word. Yes, amen. amen. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Things that we take with us as we go from this place. This time we'll, we'll commute, gather together for those who uh, at the Horizon Center for those who RSVP so they could make sure they have the right number. If you have not RSVP, you can still see Talia. Where's Talia? Okay, you still get that together, all right? But thank you so much. God bless this family. This family has been uh, just a rock of Gibraltar in this, in this city. Yeah. All you got to do is mention QL. I say Quincy Leroy, and they said, that's his real name? I said, no, that's just the name I gave him. But I, t I tell you, this family has been a blessing, I think, to all. I don't know how many people in Muncie have not worked at QLs. I did three weeks, and that was enough. But <laughs> that's some hard work. Uh, but I, I thank God for, for this family. So thank you, Dr. Woodgett. Uh, and so we're going to just give a benediction. And we're going to, is there anything else from the family? Yes. Yes. And so we're just kind of constrained today. And, uh, and Dr. Woodgett needed to get up before family members had to leave. So we're going to give the benediction. And then uh, we'll meet you at the Horizon Center. It's on High Street. I don't know the exact address. but 401 South High Street for those of you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the life and legacy of Wayne Eugene Stevens. Thank you for the lives that he's touched and is all of us. And even just watching the video tribute, we can see that what started in Muncie, Indiana, and as Dr. Woodrow said, I'm glad to be a Munsonian. What started in Muncie, Indiana, traveled around the world to touch the hearts and lives of people. Now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of the precious Holy Spirit Rest, rule, and abide with each of us until we meet again. Let every heart say, Amen. Be blessed as you go.